20 years, dance has been the way that I express myself. As a dancer, I have been on stage portraying the slightly awkward rhythms of waiting in line at the bathroom. I have portrayed a washed up ballerina treading that careful line between delusion and reality. As a choreographer, I have used dance as an outlet for my struggle with my godmother's battle with breast cancer and her survival. As an audience member, I have been moved to laugh, to cry, and to love. In the raw, most basic sense of the form, dance is a physical activity. It is the structure of a bony skeleton, long pillars of support, and well-oiled joints. It is muscle attachments, pulling the bones towards one another and pulling them away into space. It is the breath inflating the lungs, breathing energy, which is turned in to life that will sustain a performance. It is the heart beating that energy, pumping it through the body. In this structure, it is the most physical of all human activities. It is the body's pure internal environment reacting to its surroundings. Sequences of movement are put into cadence with this physiology, this breath, this beat, this internal rhythm. These rhythms react and respond as well to auditory input. Sequences are put together in sequence to the timing of music. Even and syncopated temp tempos. They are put together to the cadence of speech, words and pauses, teeth against tongue, tumbling over one another. These movements in space are further layered upon one another as a single dancer in a solo joins another becoming a duet, a third into a trio, a group, an ensemble until dancers fill the entire space. The movements in space are further layered upon. They shape the space around them, creating lines of positive outlines and negative hollowings between body parts, between bodies, between the edges of the environment. Layered on top of this physicality, this physiology are the elements that the dancer, the botter, body, the human, the performer bring. These dancing bodies are informed by years, sometimes decades of practice, learning techniques, hours upon hours in the studio. Through repetition, development, and experimentation, these bodies are shaped. They are trained to be strong and supple. They are trained to be lithe and long. They are trained to be elegant. They create the appearance of effortlessness in what are really, truly difficult actions. As a dancer, we don't want you to be nervous or exhausted by our performance, but intrigued and excited. This repetition also creates neural pathways, brain to body and back to brain. We call it muscle memory. The body is trained to create sequences that it will know so that the mind, the performance, can focus on something else. In rehearsal, longer durations of movement are put together. Individual choreography is set against group choreography. It is chopped up, divided, and put back together again. This creates a dance concert. To these raw movement phrases, the dancer brings their humanity, their own life experience. They bring their personality, they bring their world shaped by significant events, significant relationships. They are also shaped greatly by the teachers that have, that have trained this technical body. They, shaped, they are shaped by generations upon generations of movement vocabulary handed down. 
You've heard of oral histories. This is a movement history, a physical history. We are influenced and inspired to become creators in our own right. In modern dance especially, a rich lineage of choreographic styles have been passed down from choreographer to dancer, who is in turn inspired to become a choreographer who, who tells that movement to other dancers, who are in turn inspired to become makers of movement. Through this sharing of ideas, movement concepts are never invented in the scope of the body. They are simply borrowed, digested, and bequeathed upon the next generation. And yet no two bodies learn in the same way. They don't replicate in the same way, and they don't regurgitate in the same way. They are informed by their own structural normalities. The ratio of shin to femur, the stretch of ligament and of soft tissue, the set of the scapula in the shoulder girdle. These are the quirks that shape the tool of the body. In studio, in studio art, there are brushes and paint. There is ink and paper. There is chisel and stone. These are the instruments of creating art. In music, there is pounded brass and valves. There are strings stretched topped over a wooden frame. These are the instruments of sound. Yet in dance, all we have is the flesh and bone of our human form. It is this human form that is the instrument, the tool for the choreographer. It is this human form that will take the movement and turn it into artistic interpretation. choreographer's job, the dance maker's responsibility, to put together the sequences of movement, whether they are narrative or abstract or thematic, whether they tell a linear story or are simply fragments of an idea. These glimpses are what will create a dance. A choreographer's creation is too, truly a piece of their own soul. It can be as simple as a step or as complex as each movement, each joint, each muscle moving in a different direction. Choreographers manipulate the human form in time, in space, and in energy. They place bodies in stage, close together or far apart, close to the audience, or huddled far away in the corner of the room. Will the movement be fast or slow? Will it be dense or will it be sparse? Will it be heavy or will it be light? Dance makers further layer intention through dramatic direction. Their own experiences and intentions placed on top of this movement vocabulary. They create dances about love and about loss. They create dances about refugees and about kings. They create dances about breakfast or mitosis. Any topic is free range for an artist. Any topic can trigger inspiration. These are inspirations that leave an openness for interpretation from the audience. It is an intention with which the choreographer will create movement, but it is not always that same intention that the audience will receive. Just as in modern art, each modern dance <coughs> choreographer gets to share their unique voice, a unique view, a unique lens through which their artistry will flow. This idea of abstraction and creative and varied movement vocabulary allows room for the audience to have an individual viewing. Modern, da modern dance concepts are not concrete. They are a fluid line, open for interpretation. It is a conversation between mind and heart and body.
In addition to the manipulations of performance through the dancer's body and movement selection through the choreographer's artistic <coughs> intention, the audience plays a third and vital role in dance performance. The audience brings their own experiences to the table, their significant events, their significant relationships, their present mood, how they sit in the theater. Are they in a, having a good day or a bad day? Are they stressed from work or are they elated in the company of a dear friend? Expectations of a performance will also vary greatly. What do you think the dance is going to be about? Did you read the program? Did it say in the program? Do you know the performers? Do you know the choreographer? Have you been here before? Do you recognize the strains of a top 40 pop ballad coming over the speakers? All these factors combine to how an audience will perceive a dance performance. What, happen, what happens in the now, in the moment, in the flesh, that is live performance. That is live dance. The vibration of the floor, the heat from the lights, the smell of sweat and effort, the sound of the dancer's breath as they become exhilarated through a performance. These are available for an audience to absorb. Certainly, in everyday interactions, particularly conversations, we present one side of the story. We present our part. It is our personal half, and it is merely interpreted by the other side of the conversation. Although not always, perhaps, as directly as intended, with dance, the, it is the entire body that is moving, the entire body that is communicating. Modern dance continually offers room for this audience interpretation. It leaves space, it leaves acceptance for each person to have their own voice. We as humans don't like being told how to think, how to feel, how to act. You give me your part of the story, I will internalize and react as I see fit. My most memorable adventure in the tangled web of presentation and interpretation was a solo I created a handful of years ago for a dear friend. He was going through a difficult divorce, and after five years of a dramatic and passionate marriage, he was shifting away. For him, in the relationship, and specifically for his side of it, anniversaries always held a special meeting. Each year, anticipating the date, he and I would discuss in depth the perfect gift to portray his love, whether it be paper, linen, leather, or fruit. As I created a vocabulary of movement for his solo, I researched in my own mind, how could representations of these gifts <coughs> be revealed to portray his love and his loss? I created gesture phrases, phrases that centered on the themes of these anniversary gifts and presented them towards the loneliness of an empty chair. As the solo developed on stage, it became more frantic, more frenetic, culminating in an angry circling of the chair. Ultimately, he walked away from the loneliness, from the gifts, from the chair, and from the audience. Even thinking back now, my chest tightens at the passion with which he performed that dance the rawness of his emotion on stage. He brought years of love and ache to his performance. He brought a body trained by decades of technique. I brought my support for his changes in his life and the struggles with my own relationship. I also brought my choreographic inclinations to match gesture with strength. In concert, the solo was successful. The audience applauded, and he felt like he had an emotional 
a, a place to release his emotions. It was critiqued by a well-known dance expert and writer, and I eagerly awaited her response. Yet when the printing came out, I was surprised, even shocked, to read what she had wrote. In the empty chair, she saw an emptying apartment. I quote, This crazy guy was planning to move out of his apartment in the middle of the night without paying rent. A man pushed to his limit, he could only pace and coil his hands, as if unscrewing light bulbs. In the gesture of picking a fruit and slicing away its significance, she saw the removal of a light bulb, the last vestige in an empty apartment. In retrospect, the elements of change and loss were represented, although not that emotional river that I hoped to portray. We can only give what we can give, and we can only receive what we can receive, but what we do with that information, how we process it, and how we carry forth with it in our lives. That's where the choice is. How the trifecta of dancer, choreographer, and audience intersect, that completes the shape of dance as art. So, that I, ask, so I ask that next time you're watching a performance, whether it be dance, or music, or theater, or you're standing in a museum letting the power of a painting wash over you, that you use your eyes and your ears, and your heart, and your mind, and your body to make yourself available for interpretation. Don't be afraid to add your own colorful flair to a piece of art. Don't be afraid you are wrong. Don't be afraid that you think differently than anyone else. It is your past. It is your present. It is your future. It is your own, and it is good. Thank you.